Hello everybody, it's July 23rd, 2019, and this is the first day where we've had people claim that they've played against Alpha Star, which is an AI designed to play StarCraft II through machine learning, designed by uh, DeepMind Technologies, or whatever. And this is a replay showcasing uh, the agent, Alpha Star, playing as Terran. And apparently it's actually the first game that it's ever lost on the ladder as Terran, and it's against Butte, the blue Terran on the other side, who is a Diamond League 4100 4, MMR player. So it should be interesting. Um, I'm wondering how Alpha Star managed to lose against uh, a Diamond player, as in previous iterations we've seen that it's achieved uh, far higher levels of play than that. So. Without further ado, uh, let's go through this replay and see what happened. Okay, so in the bottom right hand side we have Alpha Star playing as the barcode Terran. And the reason why uh, it's playing as a barcode is that um, Blizzard and DeepMind, they don't want people to know that they're playing against Alpha Star when they're queuing into the ladder. And the best way to do this is to play as an anonymous uh, barcode because there are a lot of actual real players that play under this same name So if he plays as that then there's no way that you'll know that you're playing against a robot So we have Alpha Star going for the gas first play uh, with the wall off here And this is an interesting uh, depot placement first of all um, He leaves a gap in his wall and he starts his barracks as well. So this is actually a wall against certain units, such as uh, in TVT, you can, well, this is a full wall against Hellions and Marauders, uh, but there are smaller units such as Marines, Widow Mines that could get through. So uh, that's already an interesting variation by Alpha Star. It's walling off in a way that humans usually don't do. And he does take the double gas uh, right off the bat, so pretty standard in terms of building building order. Now, on the other side, we have uh, Butte going for the racks into command center, so he forgoes, he forgoes going any gases before his command center, so this is usually considered a pretty risky play, because if there's a proxy reaper, any, any sort of cheese that comes in early on, you, know, you probably won't be able to defend with only a marine and no gas units. Uh, so, let's look at the scouting so far. So, on the vision of Alpha Star, uh, there's still nothing going on. I guess he's going to wait for the first Reaper to scout, which is quite common in Grandmaster level play in TVT. Whereas, on the other side, Butte has not scouted either, and he's just going for a blind bunker at the, at the start. And he's also taking his double gases right after taking his command center. And he's also walling off here with another bunker, uh, just to make sure if a Reaper comes in, uh, he will be safe against that, so pretty solid defense so far against a pretty much standard opener from the agent here. Uh, now interesting to note that in standard TVT, players usually put, usually take workers off of their gases to get a quicker command center around this time. However, Alpha Star decides to go for the starport variation, which is I would say not as common in Grandmaster level play, but still a uh, viable strategy. So he's going for standard uh, Reaper Hellion play. And uh, something about uh, control group. So if we're in a replay, you can actually go to a player's SCB vision. And you can see down here, you can see what control groups the player is using. And this is a way to kind of tell uh, whether two replays are being played by the same person because. Uh, people usually stick with the same types of control groups throughout. However, if you were to go to Alpha Star's point of view, you can see that he has absolutely no control groups and he seems to be playing um, perfectly well without actually having any control groups. Selected. So, if this was a human, it would mean that he would be clicking on all of his units and all of his buildings manually by panning over them with the camera or selecting them on the map, but, you know, that type of play is kind of, like, impossible for Ready a human to, to do, so this is, like, kind of, like, one of the big signs that this could be a robot playing because this is really not commonly seen. So, 
Meanwhile, we have Alpha Star going for a Cloak Banshee play, which is, you know, a pretty solid build. He, he's getting his uh, Reapers and Hellions to defend any frontal attacks while teching up to uh, Banshees pretty fast. And he's also taking his uh, natural CC in a kind of standard time for a Cloak Banshee opener. On the, on the other side, we have uh, two starports already and a bunch of missile turrets coming up for Butte. So it looks like he wants to be going for that Sky Terran strategy here. And in his natural, he's taking his third gas already. And he's not morphing this into an orbital just yet. And oh, there we go. He's going for a planetary fortress in his natural. So. Now, this type of opener, um, it's really geared towards a, a late game play. So he's going for that. Um, Corbett Reactor Upgrade, which is going to improve his Ravens. So it looks like uh, Butte here is going for that Mass Raven Turtling strategy, which is a very defensive playstyle, and he's hoping to win this out in a later game. Now, here comes the Banshee from Alpha Star. Uh, the Cloak Upgrade has finished, so he's going to kind of see what's going on here, but immediately he's thwarted by a Missile Turret, so there's not much that this Banshee can do. There's no room for it to fly over without getting hit by this missile turret, so he's just going to stay here for now. Another Banshee is on the way for Alpha Star. So... Oh! Mistake here by Alpha Star. Now, normally a human player would not attempt something like that, so it's kind of surprising that Alpha Star would be the one that uh, makes a move like that. Perhaps it was like a miscalculation or just like a little bit of latency on Alpha, Alpha Star's uh, part, because we know that... Um, it's been programmed to have certain attributes that are common to humans, so one of them is a little bit of latency with its movements, so it's not able to perfectly control all of its movements. It does poke in and see that there's a bunker, and does it see that there's a planetary fortress? Now, yes, it, Alpha Star does see a planetary fortress here, which is a big tell that the opponent is going to do some sort of turtley strategy here. So let's see what Alpha Star's response is. Alpha Star's current setup is a one barracks, one factory, and one starport type of play, and he's going for Ravens himself, but um, this is sort of common in pro play as well, where a player might go for the Banshees at the start and then transition to a Ravens for like a better defense, but this is interesting because Alpha Star is still building Ravens off of that starport, so this is the third Raven after two um, Banshees. Now this play, this is something that a human would do when scouting such a defensive play. Uh, one of the best ways to count, counter a defensive player is to just go greedy on the economic side, so then you can overpower them, especially if you're playing against a Terran who is going for that planetary fortress in the natural. You know that if you can get that three base economy up with triple mule production, uh, you'll be able to out macro him pretty quickly. So Alpha Star is maintaining a presence on the map with these Reapers and Hellions, which is good practice. This is what you should do. You can try to see if the turtling player is expanding or not, and uh, this is a good poke. He sees that another planetary fortress on the way. He also sees that uh, four ravens out. So at this point, as a Terran player, you know that your opponent is going for that mass raven strategy. So let's tr kind of see what he's doing. Well, he's going for a second starport and an armory. So it looks like he may want to try to counter this raven. He looks for a little bit of an auto to harass him with the raven. Uh, that's not the greatest thing. Not, not a great trade, especially since uh, he's not really killing any of the units of Butte, so I think Butte is pretty happy with that. Another squad of uh, two Ravens and a Banshee trying to fly in here, but I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, Alpha Star does have a little bit of a Marine Tank army. Now, this is pretty good. If I was a, if I was playing in this position from Alpha Star as Grandmaster Terran, uh, I would have definitely gone for those extra barracks super quickly and tried to do sort of a marine marauder tank push onto these planetary fortresses in defense because uh, Mass Raven is not very effective against like a large number of siege tanks with bio defending them. However, this is not what Alpha Star is going for. Uh, Alpha Star is still um, expanding aggressively, trying to um, maintain that economic edge, and if you look at the units, Alpha Star does have slightly more workers and obviously more mules, so it is looking quite good for Alpha Star from an economic standpoint, but let's see if he can find a way to get rid of these ravens. So, 
Um, he's building a couple turrets, I guess. He's scared of if a mass raid flyby occurs here. Getting that center tower and walling off, so this is pretty good play in case that there are any Hellions. Now, Butte on the other side, he's already up to five, five bases with four of them being planetary fortresses, so his defenses are pretty good. Now here, I don't like this uh, defensive setup by Alpha Star. I think he should go for a little bit more aggression. These, This is definitely like a lot of siege tanks, and against only eight Ravens, he can definitely potentially end the game like right now if he were to move out. However, Alpha Star is content with just harassing a little bit, and that's very interesting because this is definitely an army that could end the game right now if you were to move across the map. Or you could at least uh, deny these couple command centers that are threatening to start mining gas very soon. If these command centers get up and start mining, um, that could get a little bit scary for Alpha Star uh, with the amount of ravens that are being produced at the moment. Um, so. On the other side, Alpha Star has transitioned to going full mech with three factories and two star ports. So it looks like his composition of choice is going to be a very uh, strange composition of tanks, banshees, and ravens. Now, I'm not sure about going banshees here because the number of turrets on the map is extremely substantial right now, and there aren't actually any uh, ground units that are worth spending uh, a banshee on. So. Not really sure what the plan is here. I guess Alpha Star wants to go for sort of like a advantage. Interesting. But yeah, like still no move out yet from Alpha Star. Uh, he's nearing max, and he does have like a lot of Marines in his disposal. Twenty nine Marines on the map, which is not very good. To have. Big Raven attack here. Assault on. to zone out the Ravens to the point where he won't lose uh, any of the economy at least. So that's good. But yeah, like, Alpha Star's composition is really lacking right now. His units, he's, he has just way too many Marines, I think. Like, a human player would definitely just sacrifice the Marines somewhere in order to re-max But, um, yeah, Alpha Star is still playing really passively, uh, apart from some of this like small harassment, and it doesn't seem like it's been doing a lot because of all these um, turrets that have come to the field for Butte here. And um, just more more um, command centers up for Alpha Star. And um, well, one thing to note here is that these siege tanks, this siege tank is actually stuck, and. Um, it doesn't appear as though Alpha Star has taken a lot of liberties in his research on building placement, as these un like this building placement will definitely be problematic when it comes to siege tanks and their large mass. So uh, that's kind of interesting because when you think about building placement, it's sort of like a very difficult problem to solve for a computer because if you look at chess, chess is basically building placement 101. However. Way harder, so I'm wondering whether Alpha Star has actually done anything to try to optimize this building placement, or if it just tries to copy the replays that it learns from. Okay, so here's a good move by Alpha Star. Sacrifice the You know you don't need one Here's a big siege tank attack. The logic here for Alpha Star is that okay. If I can get enough siege tanks, I'll be able to blow up all these other turrets before they're able to uh, do damage to the siege tanks. However, I really do think the composition is lacking here. I would like to see like some Marines and Marauders added in here with upgrades so that he could really down the And like, none of the brass for Alpha Star is really working right now. Um, really, it seems like. Alpha Star is pretty frustrated at this point. He's still max expanding and still remaxing on. Uh, it looks like uh, Alpha Star has decided to change course now, going for that mass Viking composition at this point. But still producing one Banshee and a couple siege tanks at the time, which is uh, not a great thing. And now you can see that 
Uh, the Blue Terran is definitely in a huge lead. He's hardly lost any units, and Alpha Stars has been throwing uh, Banshees, Marines, Tanks, everything at And as you can see, the Blue Terran is also uh, starting to put Widow Mines out on the map, which is really effective against um, mass air composition of Terran. So, this is going to really tax the micro of Alpha Star. He's going to have to siege up his tanks and blast down those Widow Mines at an efficient rate, or else he's going to risk taking big hits. So, as you can see, Alpha Star is being quite careful against these Widow Mines. On the other hand, uh, we can see that even more ravens coming in and even more widow mines. So he's adding, uh, Butte is adding extra factories to add more widow mines. And just overall, Alpha Star does have a few war goals here, but he's have 22 ravens and 26 missile turrets for Alpha Star to compete with. This is going to be very tough. And once again, Alpha Star has maxed out on a composition that isn't really great. He has uh, 92 SCVs, 94 SCVs now, which means that his max army value is not very good. As you can see here, the gas count for Duke is starting to become overwhelming. Uh, Alpha Star does get a good pickup on this Pinesbury Fortress, but it looks like it's a little bit too late now. I would have liked to see Alpha Star go more aggressive early on, denying these bases, but you know, it looks like he was just going to hand there. He was fight, but no ground units from Alpha Star to support, and he's going to have to get out of there with this uh, massacre placement by the way. Now here's another massacre attack by the Duke here. So all these things are just going to come out of the well. Alpha Star is forced to evacuate. Still, we have missile turrets, I mean, widow mines all over the map for the Blue Terran, so it's going to make it extremely difficult for Alpha Star to push out without being spotted and without taking significant damage to his Vikings. Alpha Star still has not elected to sacrifice any SCVs, and even even then, he has like 8 global commands. So usually, uh, in the Terran late game, you want to have around 10 global commands. 50 SCVs, so you know, once you have that number of gold commands, or not that SCV supply, uh, which is what you should be doing, but it looks like Alpha Star is not aware of this strategy at this point. It begs the question like, what kind of replays Alpha Star trained on? Because if it was like pro crew, then I would think for sure that. Like mistakes such as this building placement would not have happened. And I don't even know if we've seen humans play this composition before, like this banshee, viking, raven tank style. It just seems really weird, and I just don't know how. Like, even the human strategy of just going like marine marauder tank and just like. Player would have been a lot more effective, and I think that's the main reason why this Blue Terran player is not a higher ranked player because it seems like his late game is quite strong. He takes a lot of bases, he has a pretty good economy, pretty good multitasking on the on the widow mine placement, but it seems that the early game is very weak to the bio pressure, which is not something that uh, Alpha Star has decided to do in this game, which is the main reason why. So now, Alpha Star is kind of desperate at this point. He knows he can't really fight these ravens head on, so he's going to be straight situation. But as you can see, this composition does not trade very well against the mine. So, yeah, really strange to play by Alpha Star. Totally getting shredded here. It's not looking very good for Alpha Star. It's kind of like back and forth. Really know where to go. Widow mines. That was just a terrible engagement for Alpha Star here. And uh, with the APN, you can see that they've tried to limit Alpha Star to a certain level. Um, 
still under 200 APM as Terran, which is surprising, although he is playing back up. More Raven Grass coming in. Nothing else to do with He's still building uh, four Banshees at a time, which is exactly what you don't need, so... It's kind of like something where the a AI seems to have been locked into a certain composition, where I think he was going to go for this Banshee Viking thing, like no matter what the opponent is doing, but it turns out that uh, the opponent has been going for a strategy that pretty much hard counters uh, the composition that Alpha Star has been going for. And, um, yeah, like Alpha Star has not adapted at all, still building four Banshees at a time. So it looks like there's a lot of work that needs to be done when it comes to Alpha Star not being exploited. And I think this is why uh, Blizzard decided to say, okay, we're going to play Alpha Star on the ladder, but as an anonymous player, because it does look like there are certain strategies that exploit the agent, such as this one. And uh, yeah, there's like nothing that Alpha Star can do at this point. Still a lot of workers. These siege tanks have just been sieged here this entire time. Um, so a human player, when he sees this, he would recognize that they're stuck, and he would sort of like lift off one of his buildings and put place it somewhere else. But so far, it looks like I'm just going to And uh, more Alpha Star is max, but as you can see, his competition is mostly just workers. A bunch of tanks that are stuck here so it's very interesting and it does look like um if you were to view the game from alpha star's point of view right um, he does have his siege tank selected so it looks like he is using the select all the hockey in this case um, ready to blunder wait or is he actually he might not be if we pause here he has five siege tanks selected but that does not include the siege tanks here, so I take that back. So if you analyze his hotkeys setup, there are no control groups. However, he's able to select his army here without selecting uh, the siege tanks that are stuck in his main, which is like, you know, very non-human way to play. So I would say that based on this replay, it definitely looks like this Terran player is a lot. Mineral field depleted. But, Mineral yeah, field anyway. depleted. Alpha Star really struggling to even take extra bases due to these Widow Mine placements. It doesn't seem like Bot is recognizing those Widow Mines. It's definitely like one of those other weaknesses of Alpha Star that you can keep in mind. Mass Banshee attacks are like they are able to break the two here, but. Because yeah, these ravens can come and clean up those banshees whenever they want. And still, like, a lot of bases up for the blue terran. The income is massively in favor of Buttes now. Alpha Star doesn't really have much going for him now. He's still struggling to expand to the, these outward locations. And then his base is a travesty out here. He doesn't even know what to do. He's building hellions at this point. Here are the ravens. Yeah, he's still, still microing. Like, Alpha Star is microing his heart out, but it doesn't look like it's enough. Now let's let's go into the first person view of Alpha Star uh, for a little, little bit. Kind of see what Alpha Star is doing here. So there's a lot of ravens. Um, we try to defend this, obviously. Macro behind this without, without using any control groups. It's a pretty interesting play, I have to say. And these tanks still Engine stuck. Screaming. Ready to blunder. SCV yeah. ready. Looks like, um, yeah, I'm still struggling ready against the wooden mines, as you can see here. He doesn't have any mobile detection, no SCV ravens at all, ready. so he's gonna have to rely on scan. So. It doesn't look like he knows until he actually gets hit by something, which is very interesting. I think he just, I think he just saw those tanks, but Your he didn't decide to them. Very strange play. 
So if we go back to the all the iron is still aggressively expanding here. I'm gonna build a planetary fortress to make sure that these uh, ref this refinery and turret will go down. There. Yeah, there's nothing off the start. Of the Ravens, like, barely anything has been lost for the Blue Terran so far this game, whereas, um, we're just gonna, like, keep mass expanding across the map, and, um, Alpha Star really getting squeezed here, if we look at the units tab, 52 SCVs, but there's just not a lot of mining going on, I just wonder, wonder where all his SCVs went, yeah, Id idle SCVs as well. So, not the cleanest play at all by Still trying to get things done with his army, but there's, there's just way too much. And once these window mines get get deployed, it'll be kind of hard for Alpha Star to do Not what Alpha Star needs. Still building five banshees at once. It really seems like a very clueless, clueless bot here. No, no scan though, which is surprising. Like, if it was a human, they'd be like, "Oh, let me scan that and get get rid of the rest of these mods." You would expect the bots to do that too, because it's something that's pretty obvious when you play a game like that. You want to be able to kill those Widow Mines, but anyway. Maybe he was like out of energy or something. But yeah. Seems to have forgotten about it though. Alpha Star has decided that Widow Mines are a pretty good unit, so he's gonna copy his ability. Looks like he was trying to expand, but the Widow Mine has prevented that, so good for him. And here are all the Widow Mines that were mentioned before. We're spreading out on the map. Good play by Butte here. Really take control of this entire game. Clear up this command center as well. More banshees, just like random units, air units, expensive air units being picked up by widow mines all throughout the game. Alpha Star not doing a good job of controlling those air units. Very, very curious, I'd say. Very, very curious play. And he's gonna be the last uh, Raven Assault on this base. And it's probably the last mining base on the star. So uh, once this goes down, all of them will be lost. Alpha keeps trying to push into these bases, but just like one planter, fortress, and turrets is enough to ward away this entire. Um, little mines have. Off site of the air units here. Um, he does manage to save the space, but if you look at the income, it's still massively in favor of the Blue Terran. He's very rich, he's building seven Widow Mines and eight Ravens at a time, expanding all over the map, turrets everywhere, and just <laughs> completely outplaying Alpha Star in this game, to be honest. Out strategizing Alpha Star here. Now, I will say this. Um, I think that one of the biggest reasons Alpha Star has lost this game is because of its pre predetermined strategy, inability to 
um, make adaptations in the same game. So I believe that if the t other Terran was playing more of the standard game, like something that Star has seen a lot um, in its replays training set, then game would have looked a lot more favorable for Alpha Star. You might have seen like, some good plays or whatever. But yeah, at this point, Alpha Star's stubbornness in its strategy, its compositional strategy, is looks like the biggest uh, weakness that we've seen out of it so far. But yeah, so half the number of bases here is many. One half of the mining base. Yeah, these banshees they can DPS down some turrets, but there's nothing really they can do against And yeah, just backing up more ravens, um, saving up for that killing game. Banshees are scared to death. do a good job of doing most of them without losing banshees though, so that's a nice round to start. Yeah, it's only a matter of time when these when these ravens enter the battle, most of them are full energy. One interesting thing is uh, the previous game we saw Alpha Star lose in that Protoss versus Protoss against Mana, uh, Alpha Star didn't really know how to GG, um, just kind of just let, let, let all its buildings die. So I'm curious to see whether this Alpha Star, this version of Alpha Star, will figure out that it's losing badly and decide to tap out on its own. We'll see about that. We might still be quite a while away because it doesn't look like this Alpha Star is going to give up that the Banshees can somehow do something, I guess. But it's not realistic. There's two Planetary Fortresses, Mass Turrets at this base. Like, even breaking this would be a total task for Alpha Star here. Even more Widow Mines on the way here. Uh, Alpha Star is just suffocating here. And to that, Rackfire, and I'm not sure if Alpha Star will have to do the same thing or not. That would be interesting. I guess Alpha Star doesn't really need it. That's it, that's it. There's there's no more income for Alpha Star. He's only mining gas at this point. 100 supply up and 20,000 in the bank for Blue Terran. This was just another domination after. Really, after that, that first uh, push out by Alpha Star with those tanks. Uh, just losing his armor to that, that raid in the block. This is what it so, normally against a mass raven player who builds a planetary fortress in their natural, you just gotta go for that fast, like, five attack. Maybe like around 150 supply when you have your, your stim, your combat shields, and some a couple of medivacs and marauders. Like, that type of army is almost impossible for a raven player to pretty much be. But that's like something that humans can really figure out after watching a couple of plays. Artificial intelligence like this probably is at that Especially considering like these tanks have been here this whole game, like he there's definitely like a lot that doesn't even make sense, like why are you sieging two of them and the not the rest? Oh, that's gonna be it actually. Alpha Star realizes that it's gone down and Wow. GG. So as you can see here, Alpha Star, entire game, no 
um, no control groups and just building banshees this entire time against a mass raven widowmine player with mass turrets. So, just Alpha Star. I think that the main reasons Alpha Star lost was not recognizing how defensive the opponent was. So he should have just taken that third base, gone up to like that mass bio and just like contained, con contained like. He allowed the the Terran, the blue Terran, to get up to five bases, mining gases without any sort. Of, well, he did try to harass, but the harass was with like banshees and ravens, which was not effective against these turrets. So, just like not not denying these bases aggressively, and then going for that weak composition against what his opponent was doing. Uh, that was the downfall here, and um, I don't know if they're gonna try to update the agent to. Be able to beat something like this, or if Alpha Star is going to end up like always losing to Mass Raven in the future, um, you know we'll see. Hopefully, this is not the last we've seen out, out of Alpha Star. Uh, it's definitely very exciting, and this is definitely like not the best game to showcase Alpha Star's talent. But you know, someone had to do it because if you go to Deep Mind, they're only going to show like the games where it played amazing. So you know, someone had to like kind of like show what the weaknesses are of this this agent so so good thanks for watching